Hey there again, folks. Welcome back to Eric the Unready. Picking back up where we left off last time here in the uh, cemetery. Where, uh, I can't remember which one uh, the wizard said is uh, in the forest. I think this is the forest we're in. Yeah, Enchanted Forest. Uh, so yeah, I'm not sh I can't remember which item is here. But we're supposed to get five of them to, to save uh, the princess, so. Let's see here. This is a very spooky cemetery on the eastern edge of the Enchanted Forest. It is done with decrepit gravestones. One particularly large sepulchre is nearby looking like an oversized square bathtub with a lid on it. Bathtub would be a weird thing to find in a, uh, in a, uh, graveyard. Shaggy, disreputable sort of thing that seems to have an unlimited capacity. Ah, that's the thing that we got last time. Our inventory. A float, a coupon, a book, and some tortillas. Hmm. What would have happened if we hadn't picked up the tortillas? Or the float? It makes me wonder if that stuff's actually going to be useful or not. Okay, let's see here. Examine the gravestones. Pardon my dust! Are they going to say something different each time, or is it going to be... I knew this would happen if I live long enough. Uh, excuse me for not standing up. Yeah, I'd rather you not. Stay. If you did, just stay, just stay down, please. Okay. Let's look at the lid. Lid is nestly, nestled snugly into the sepulchre. There isn't even a crack to wedge something into. We kind of open this somehow. I'm assuming. It's a blocky squared off affair with a heavy stone lid. Hmm. Let's see if we can open it. Can't seem to get a good enough grip on the lid to open the sepulchre. Sepulchre. I don't see us having anything in our inventory that we could use to open it. Something like a crowbar, maybe? Or a... Crowbar's the only thing I can think of. Okay. You're deep in the heart of the Enchanted Forest. Sinister-looking trees loom all around you, and every time you look away, you can swear you see them ch uh, changing positions out of the corner of your eye. One tree in particular seems to be regarding you with, an evil, with evil intent. If no roots look like they're just waiting for an opportunity to trip you up. Way back to the cemetery lies the east and the path continues to the west. Okay. Examine the path. Okay. Rocks. Nothing special about them. <laughs> tree. What you guys say about the tree? It's a dour looking old specimen. Yeah, I would say so. You're right. Those are nasty, normal things that look like they're lying in wait to trip you up. Uh, <laughs> let's see something. What happens if we do something with the roots? I'm just curious. Um. Ooh, actually, let's see what happens if we try to talk to the tree. Cease the chicanery, varlet, and let me pass. Ooh, listen to the fancy words. <laughs> it's a pretty nice chunk you got there. I hate to see any termites get on it. You don't scare me. There are no termites in this world. Hmm. Look, it's Haley's Comet. Sorry, Haley's Comet is due for another 42 years. That's a very well-informed tree. If I were Sir Lancelot, you'd let me buy. I knew Sir Lancelot. I worked with Sir Lancelot. And believe me, you're no Sir Lancelot. Stand aside. I come in the name of the king. I don't care who you come in the name of. Keep your love life out of this. Oh, my word. <laughs> wow. I was actually thinking, you know, when it says something like that. But they actually, <laughs> that was the direction they were thinking. <laughs> I didn't think you could actually talk to it. I was just, I was just like, I wonder what happened. 
Okay. That's gonna. What I was originally thinking was pulling the. Okay, yeah, you tug on the roots, but they seem firmly rooted. Hmm. Okay. What happens if I say wear the, wear the tree? Can't wear the tree. <laughs> oh, oops, wrong way. Oh, the tree roots rise up out of the ground in a precision time move, trip you. Huh. Okay, so we have to deal with the tree somehow. The tree bats you to the ground with a leafy hand and says, Go away! Uh, Tortoise to the tree, maybe? Bribery will get you nowhere. Do tortoises? It slows you down, right? Yeah, muscle relaxants. Let's see, oh, let's examine the flow. Looks pretty much like root beer on your on your world, all brown, syrupy, and fizzy. You don't see how that would be useful. Can we read the book? Put it to sleep. When glancing at the co cover makes you drowsy, you dare not actually open the book. How interesting. Not. Nah, hmm. Give book the tree, maybe? Hmm. I'm guessing that we have to do something with the uh, with the roots. Ooh, maybe put tortoise on tree roots. Do we need that tortoise? Let me look that up. I'm actually plan I'm actually making more use out of this uh, tablet. I need to get use out of it because I bought it. Uh, I bought it for my mom. She went blind, which is weird that I bought something uh, like this for someone who just went blind. But she's not like completely, completely blind. She's got a macular ge ge macular ge degeneration and. Uh, like parts of her vision are like blurry so she uh she can see a little bit so i was thinking maybe you know with uh something like this you know we can, you know you can like make the text bigger smaller stuff like that uh, i was thinking uh how did that spell oh tort bees uh, and yeah, she wasn't able to get any use out of it. Well, the, uh, looking up just torties for Eric the Enrady doesn't tell anything. So anyway, yeah, I need to get more use out of this because it's just kind of been sitting around. It's it's not that it's not an expensive one, but still. Is this a guide or see I'm, I'm what I'm afraid of is if I continue and we don't have the torties so let's yeah let's just assume that we're gonna need it so yeah let's uh, I've got a guide pulled up too if I need it by giving it some refreshment 
It said no bribery. Here, let me let me let me restore that. Um, shook day three. No, no, no. Shook one was the last one I, uh, I saved, wasn't it? I think it was, wasn't it? Here at the tree, right? That's when I was, yeah, yeah, that's when I was going to, uh, see about, uh, yeah, doing exactly what I did. So, yeah, we got tortoise. So, giving it refreshment. We tried giving it the, the float. I did that! Did I know it? Did I not do that? Or did I just do it with the, uh, or did I just do it with the, uh, I just did it with the, with the, uh, Torties and the book. Moving the flow from the backpack first, the liquid seeps into the ground at the base of the tree. Suddenly all the roots spring uh, straight up, uh, like the hair on the, uh, back of a scared cat. They start to quiver and then they begin to weave around drunkenly. A few of the smaller ones start singing a song about their dear mother that they left behind in our... Okay. Did it get drunk? It was root beer. How's it drunk? Off root beer. You squeeze by the weaving roots and head deeper into the forest. You've arrived at a clearing at the very center of the forest. An enormous tree grows here, and the wizard's words immediately echo in your mind. The pitchfork of Dam Damocles is entangled in the leaves of the tallest tree in the enchanted forest. Okay, so we're after the pitchfork. Barely able to contain your excitement, you, you, you side up along the tree. High above you, the uh, the trunk branches out into roots. Slowly, even for you, comprehension dawns. The tree is growing upside down. Whatever le leaves it uh, must uh, it may have must be hidden underground. At the base of the tree is an unruly pile of branches. The way back into the forest lies to the east. Okay, well, I guess we got to move the branches, but let me. Pal has a guilty, furtive look to it, as if it's trying to conceal something. These branches look fishy. This is a, as close to the center of the enchanted forest as we wish to come. Tourist Department of Public Works. Model, never do tomorrow what you can put off until the day after tomorrow. Okay, so maybe take branches. Push aside the pile of branches and discover an ancient trap door set into the ground. Okay, well, open that door. You grasp the ring and pull. The door creaks open, uh, creating yet another opportunity for a neat sound effect. You see a gloomy set of stairs leading down. Okay. Well, there we go. You start to feel your way down the stairs. As soon as you disappear below ground level, you hear a crash overhead. Looking up, you see the trapdoor quivering with satisfaction that it has lived up to its name. Great. Continue down the stairs, and at the bottom, you walk through a revolving spike turnstile. On the other side of the door is a sign. Oh, wow. You're standing in an open field west of a white house with a boarded front door. You see a small mailbox here. Okay. I think I remember this this part. This is a reference to another game, uh, Zork. Uh, I was mentioning in the first episode that back in the you know the nineties, uh, well not back in the nineties, back in two, uh, early two thousands when I was in high school, I got to playing a lot of abandoned wear games, you know. And uh, yeah, text adventures was some of the games I got to play. There was some by a legend, and there was some by a, web, by a company called Infocom. I'm about to say website called Infocom. That's that doesn't make any sense. But they were, I think they were like the two big uh, text adventure companies that you may not have ever heard of. <laughs> anyway, uh, Zork was I, I don't know if it was the first one that Infocom did, but it was. I think it's the, mo the most famous. Uh, and yeah, it begins just like this. You're standing there, and there's a mailbox there. Okay, well, we got to type now. Look at house. My face is covering up a little bit. 
It's like a small white house. It's a small white house that looks hauntingly familiar to you, as if you had spent a long time there in previous life. The door is closed and boarded up, but it looks as if uh, one of the boards is a little loose. Okay. It doesn't. Uh, it doesn't stay that way. <laughs> that's that's pretty cool though. I wonder if there's like competition between the two companies or not. Sam and the board. It's definitely looser than the boards that surround it. Oh yeah, yeah. I already looked at the house. Uh, mailbox. It's closed. Radio mailbox set. Uh, looks like it has uh, was borrowed from another game. <laughs> it is currently closed. So they do what they were doing. Do not back up. Severe hero damage. Okay. Turnstile. So nasty and spiky, uh, and more dangerous than you can. It's nasty and spiky, more dangerous than you can imagine. The New York City subway system has several of them on back order. Wow. I'll open the mailbox. Let's see what mail there is. Ooh, take that mail. Just don't arrest me for 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 mail tampering. Can we take it? So let's read it. Read the mail. So notice from the Dwarves Clearing House. Yes, Fondor Bindle, Bindle Crank, you may have already won the grand prize in the 115th annual Make-A-Wish Sweepstakes. Soon you and all the other little Bindle Cranks could be enjoying the dream of a lifetime. Simply bring this winning notice to our headquarters in, in the Great Cavern and our courteous and friendly staff will tell you which of our fabulous prizes you have won. With absolutely no sales pressure to buy one of our magazines or sit through an incredibly boring presentation on vacation real estate. <laughs> Is Publishers Clearinghouse even still a thing? I think I think I still hear commercials on uh, of it sometimes. I don't think it's as big as it used to be. Hmm. Okay. Well, we got the we got that. What's the map look like? Okay. Um, can we pull the board, maybe? Straight at the board, but it can't seem to make it budge. So there's a cavern here. Whoa. This is a huge underground cavern. There are buildings to the northwest, to the northeast, and south. How above you, the branches of a tree are uh, sticking down from the roof of the cavern. In the branches, you see the pitchfork of Damocles. The little white house lies somewhere uh, out of uh, out of sight to the east. Hey, well, there's our objective. We're already right there. We'll be done just like that. Yeah. <laughs> Examine rocks. The rocks out here are but a small sample of the huge selection inside. Can we take the rocks? I forgot to try to tr take the rocks earlier. You can't just take the rocks at friends. You might you have to buy them. Okay, sheesh. Oh crap, that's not what I want to do. Okay. So I went east. Let's go this way. Friends Rock Emporium. <laughs> you walk into a veritable showcase of rocks. Big rocks, little rocks, shiny rocks, dull rocks, precious stones, base metals. The only exit is to the south and west. Behind the counter is Fran, a plaid, uh, a plaid clad dwarf. You know, with clad there, I feel like I wasn't saying plaid right. Is it plaid? No, no, I'm, I'm very sure it's plaid, right? Can I interest you in anything, Fran asks. I was looking for something in a rock, you reply. Ah, well, you've come to the right place. Just look around and let me know if there's anything that catches your fancy. And remember, there's a free bungee cord with every purchase to lash the rock to your cart to help you get it home. In the counter, you see a headrest uh, special and a starter rock. It doesn't look like a very comfortable headrest. It's 
We're having this music. I never had the music to, to this game. Okay, where is plaid on plaid? Oh, examine the counter. Oh, no. Oh. Counter. This is uh, just a simple counter in which you see a headrest special and a starter rock. Check out that headrest. It's a solid rock about two feet thick. You couldn't imagine sleeping on anything more uncomfortable. Examine the starter rock. Looks about half the size of a dwarf's fist. Okay, well let's talk to uh, Fran. Uh, can you do that with every part of your body or just your arms? Sorry, I'm just very enthusiastic about my job. <laughs> well, I want to work in. I sell rocks to miners. Every dwarf in the NSGUE knows that. If you need a rock, come to France. How are your prices? We've got the lowest prices anywhere. That's because we're underground. <laughs> You don't have a cousin named Stan, do you? Nope. No, certainly not. Well, yes, but I don't want to talk about him. I'm guessing Stan is somebody we're going to meet. We haven't met a Stan yet. I don't have any money, but I'd really like one of these rocks. Sorry, cash only. Why don't you come back later? Okay. Can I take the starter rock? Kind of to get me a taste? Hmm. Oh, yeah, I just tried taking, uh... Ask Fran for Starter Rock. Fran says, sure, 20 zonk, zonk mids ought to do it. That sounds like a made-up currency. Not sure why. Can I read the signs? The signs are more distracting than helpful. Okay. It is true. Fred has more rocks, stones, precious metals, and unprecious metals for sale than you have ever seen at one time. Okay. It, oh, whoa, oh, whoa. As you head for the door, Fred rushes up to you and says, No first time customer friends ever leaves empty handed. He thrusts a pickaxe into your hands. This is a minor starter kit, courtesy of the Tourist Department of Public Works. Use it in good health. The next time you need a rock, be sure to come to France. If I have a pickaxe, why do I need to come back for rocks? Wouldn't that be a good way for me to get rocks on my own? This is a huge underground cavern. There are buildings to the northeast and south. High above you, the branches of a tree are sticking down from the roof of a cavern. In the branches, you see the pitchfork of Damocles. Oh, yeah, yeah, I already read that. I don't know why I, why I was reading that. Oh, uh, yeah, let's examine that too. It's, it is the pitchfork of Damocles, one of the objects that but, but the w mighty wizard said you will need at the end of your quest. Let's examine the pickaxe. It's a fairly uh, st standard looking pickaxe with a flat blade for digging at one end and a sharp point for prying up rocks with, at the other. Along one side are the words courtesy of the Tourist Department of Public Works. Our motto, the harder you work, the less we have to... <laughs> Okay, to the south. Okay, Publisher's Clearinghouse. This is the lobby of a small building. There's a dwarf standing in front of a wall full of redwood clocks. The only way out is to the north. Clocks are cheap knockoffs that were stamped out on some mindless assembly line for pennies apiece. Ed McDwarf. Well, he's a little on the short side, and he hasn't got much hair, and his ears are huge. But other than that, he's a real looker. <laughs> Is there anything? Yeah, examine the counter. I don't see a counter uh, to actually click on. Okay. Hmm. Well, let's talk to him. How's the weather down there? What an original line. I haven't heard that one from a human since the last time I met one. Our character is a bit of an asshole. You know, if you keep your mouth open like that, a bug might fly in. 
That's the idea. I like bugs. I see you left a really big tie at home. <laughs> Good move. <laughs> I'm okay. I don't know why that was funny. Or m more funny than it should have been. <laughs> when I got up this morning, I said to myself, Gee, maybe when I'm at work today, I'll get insulted by some human who eats 60 bananas a day. Thanks for making my dream come true. Please wait a minute while my eyes adjust to the glare coming off your head. Fine, I'll just stand here and bask in your reflected glory until you deign to speak to me again. I to my screen back when I first came through the revolving door. It's just a nostalgic look, uh, nostalgic flashback on the part of the altar. Don't worry about it. Then talking about what a disappointment. You're breaking my heart. <laughs> okay, so can we? Maybe we can use the pickaxe on the door, on the, on the board covering the door. Let me examine this stuff again. Coupon. Okay, we'll take the coupon. Okay, examine it. Okay, yeah, we can't make any use of that out of it. Mm, what happens if we try to take a clock? Okay, I didn't think so. Yeah, let's see if we can use the uh, pickaxe on the on the uh, board. I can use the pickaxe on that. If we can get back to the cemetery, we might could use it on the uh, on the grave on the sepulchre. Uh, not push. Uh, use pickaxe on. Board. Okay. Oh, open board with uh, pickaxe. Yeah! You slip the business end of the pickaxe under the board and give it a good heat. The board pops loose and you push it to one side. Yeah. What is my score? Ooh, 120 out of 1,000. Nice. Hmm. I bet we can't go east. Oh, well that, that was where we went. Okay. You squeeze through the opening in the door and find yourself in a kitchen that reeks of garlic. A quick survey of the room uh, reveals nothing of interest. Holding your breath, you dash it into the living room. In this dark room with a trophy case along one wall, and an ancient oriental rug on the floor, stairs lead up to, to the second floor, and the kitchen lies to the west. In the trophy case, you see a beard. Okay. It's a very convincing, very bushy, false beard. It's a musty old rug that covers most of the floor. Uh, case is locked up tight. Okay. Well... Yeah, it says a lot. Never mind. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that I know what to do. Throw back the rug and discover trap door. Open trap door. Struggle with the heavy door and manage to raise it a few inches. Muffled voice uh, comes from somewhere down below. Haven't you people bothered me enough already? Go away. A frail white arm emerges and hands you a key. Then it disappears into the darkness again, pulls the door shut after it, after, after it with a decisive bang. Okay. If I remember right, and it's shocking I can actually remember uh, as terrible as my memory is. Seems like in, uh, in Zork, there's a, there's a monster, maybe a troll in the basement that you have to fight. Which is really annoying because I think it was random, you know. What you have to do, I think it was random. Maybe it isn't, but you have to like, do different things during the fight, like type different things. And uh, I, I bet that's what it is. I bet that's what that was supposed to be like. Whatever you fought down there. Okay, so 
let's uh, open uh, trophy case with the key. Skeleton key. I left the case with the key and it swings open. Here's a question. Can I, if I hit take and then click on the beard. Ah, uh, you can do that. Okay. What if that's quicker? Probably would be. It's easier to see than have to be like, okay, what? where's the beard at? <laughs> Let's say up. Race up the stairs. Well, that's a bunch of bones there. Oh, this is a small bedroom on the second floor floor of the house. There's a, there's a pile of bones here that appears to have uh, fallen through a hole in the ceiling that leads to the attic. Uh, the pictures are all masterpieces by Leonardo the Dwarf. Miniatures, of course. They're too, bit, they're too long to be dwarven bones. They must be human. Can we take any... Oh, dang it. Can we take any bones? You sift through the pile and discover a driver's license, which you immediately pick up. Yeah, that wasn't what I was expecting to find. Fondor Bindle Crank, age 437. Height, 3 foot 6 inches. The picture is of a luxurious beard with what... What may be a dwarf behind it? I remember what we gotta do. I remember now. I remember now how this works. I see why this. Okay. <laughs> Looking into the attic is about two feet higher than you can reach. I remember this now. Uh. Okay, yeah, I, I remember now how this works. Okay, let me let me see if we can go north. I'm betting that's the way we came. Ah, that's where the turnstile is. Okay. Okay, I know what we gotta do. It's pretty funny. So it's here. So let's wear the beard. You hear a small voice in your head say, The dwarf will not be fooled if you put on the beard in his presence. Go outside it. Okay. Well, never. Okay. 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 Wear the beard. Okay. Now we go back. It's, uh, okay, so let's kneel. <laughs> okay. Beard begins to itch. Okay, let's take off beard. Okay, so let's kneel. Kneel down. Okay, so let's wear the beard. I think it's. I think you only have so long you can wear the beard. It sounds like a. You shuffle off painfully on your knees. <laughs> he looks so much more friendly. <laughs> let's talk to him. Hi, I'm a dwarf just like you. Yes, I can see that. Pleased to meet you. I'm definitely not a human that is kneeling down in order to fool you. Of course not. Such a simple ruse would never fool someone that shrewd as I. <laughs> Please excuse me if my voice sounds human. I have a cold. I understand when I'm really sick and feel like throwing up. I, s I sometimes sound human too. <laughs> okay, so we've, uh, we've established that you've been duped into thinking I'm a dwarf. Absolutely, let's get on with it. Wow. Okay, so... Mail, we give the mail to him. It's like, what do we give to him? Give mail to Dwarf. Dwarf falls out a redwood clock and starts to hand it to you. 
Then he gives the ticket a, a bored glance. My God, it's an actual winner. He quickly recovers his composure and says, Ahem. They say another winner among many in our fine, absolutely legal with no hanky-panky sweepstakes. He compares your number to one on his list. Well, Mr. Bindlecrank, I'm happy to say that you've won it all, and all expenses paid. He glances up at you and says, Oh, I almost forgot. We've uh, been getting some fraudulent claims recently. May I see some sort of ID, please? Beard begins to itch. Uh-oh. Give license to... What was that? Uh, he glances at the license and says, "All right, Fondor Bindle Crank, let's see uh, what you want. It's an all expenses paid day at your at the Magical Dwarf Theme Park, courtesy of the Magic Construction Company." He takes you by the arm and walks you out into the Great Cavern. There, like high-speed time-lapse photography, a construction crew uh, builds a huge theme park right before your eyes. The dwarf pats you on the arm and says, Enjoy! He disappears. Standing on the midway of a crowded carnival. Right next to, uh, right next to you is a huge ferris wheel, whose cars almost brush the leaves of the tree hanging down from the cavern roof. To the west is a game booth. Uh, to the southeast uh, uh, and southwest are rides. Fred's Rock Emporium can still be entered uh, to the northeast. The dwarves' clearinghouse is still visible to the south. And the little white house lies somewhere to the east. Oh, wow. One of the seats of the Ferris wheel dangles in front of you. You see a lever here. Yeah. Amusement park. Man, we got almost all directions to go except for two. I remember this part. I, I, I remember more of this game than I figured I would. Which is... Not expected. I expected not to remember much. Uh, really good game, though, obviously. <laughs> anyway, that is all for this episode. I do sincerely hope you all enjoyed. If you did, uh, feel free to leave a like. Uh, let me know what you think, and subscribe if you haven't. And, uh, yeah. See you guys in the next episode.